Okay, we are live in the Wire Art and Jewelry Makers Club. So if you guys don't already know, I do a live stream every Wednesday night. It's uh, Heather Boyd Wire here, if you don't already know. And um, yeah, I've been doing live streams on YouTube for about a year. Recently, the technology hasn't been working out so well, so we're going to try it in the Facebook group. We have a lot of members now. So that's really awesome. Uh, and what I can do is I'm going to download this movie, uh, the video after and put it on YouTube for people that don't have uh, Facebook. So if you just bear with me, I'm just going to pull up the video on my computer. This is on my uh, iPod. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the screen pretty soon and we're going to get started doing some projects. So I just have to find the video. Here we go. I got it. I'm going to make sure my sound is off. Perfect. So if you guys comment, I should be able to see it. Uh, in, there's Clarice is on. Thanks, Clarice. That's awesome. That's great that you're on. And uh, yeah, we're going to try this on Facebook and see how it goes. So if you guys, as you're hopping on, if you want to introduce yourself in the comments, Carrie's here. Hey, Carrie, how are you? And uh, we're going to see how it goes for uh, doing videos uh, on Facebook now, because uh, obviously the technology is a lot better. And uh, you guys were asking me what I'm going to do tonight. I didn't really have a project super planned, but I've been really wanting to try wire weaving. So what I've done is I did some sketches. I did a few little funny uh, prototype gadget stuff. So I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'll flip the screen now and we'll have a look at uh, all of that. So bear with me while I flip. The screen. As you can see, I've done some little sketches there for wire weaving. Now I've never done wire weaving. So this is going to be a whole new thing. And of course, as always, I put my own uh, spin on it. So we're going to see how it goes. Uh, I'm glad I was able to catch this. That's awesome that you can, uh, that you can catch uh, the live stream. And uh, I think I might not do them on YouTube anymore. Um, I'll just download them after the fact to, to YouTube. And uh, so just let me get these. This, sorry, I'm just getting the iPod attached. I think that's good. So hopefully that's clear enough and hopefully it's bright enough. I do have a bright light here. So we're going to find the best way to do this. I just want to make sure my hands stay in the middle because when I actually post the video onto a YouTube product, probably what I'm going to do is just kind of compress it a little bit. So I'm also going to try to pull up my screen so I can um, see the comments as well. And if ever I miss the comments, you guys just let me know. Um, if you have any questions after the fact, I'll check them after the after the live stream. So these are my sketches. Like I said, I've never done a wire weaving before. So here's a few little designs that I saw just in a Google search to see what how actually it is done because I've honestly never done it before. So these are my sketches. As always, I keep the ideas in a book. Uh, after I show you the little gadget, gadgets I made, I'm going to try to make a little ring. So let's put that at the side. And I had this crazy idea to make a kind of a loom for wire weaving. Now, don't even attempt this at home because it's absolutely ridiculous and it didn't totally work so well, but it's kind of interesting, kind of the thought process that went into this. So I don't know if you guys know about weaving, but how it's done. So it's basically done with a sort of a gadget that you, you put, to, like there's a wharf and a weft. And so what I did was I tried to simulate it with wire. It's kind of like, they almost look like two combs type of thing. And it's kind of hard to imagine, but I did like one piece was like that. So these pieces look a little bit like this. They look a little bit like combs, but they have, um, these ones have like little loops in the end. So what I did was I did uh, half of the wires on one and half of the wires on the other. So what happens, and this is just a template that I use to do other kinds of uh, wire uh, work. And so basically what I was doing is one kind of fits into the other like that. So you could manipulate the um, these back and forth. So what I was doing was you, so this one was kind of like here. And then what you want to do is push this. Oh, Patricia's here. Hey, Patricia, how are you? You made it. I'm going to really try to catch everybody's comments here. And Yvonne's here. Awesome. Kathy, that's great. So I'm just showing you guys, I'm going to do a wire weaving ring, but this is just one of these crazy gadgets that I've made to just to experiment with weaving. And so how it works is, um, so what I've, what I've done is this one. I just want to check if that's over top or, yeah. So what I did was I want to be able to now put this one 
this has to go under and over. So what I want to do, this is like that. And so this has to go down and this one goes up. Do you see how these kind of separate like this? It's a crazy little gadget and it's not really working, but I just thought I'd show you guys anyway. So then we take this thin wire and this is actually a 28 gauge wire uh, because it's more like thread, like it's really thin. And so, so then I would put this one there, okay, in there and then use kind of a comb actually just to kind of push it up like you would do when you're weaving. And then the idea is then these have to go, this has to go kind of inside of this one, like this. This is gonna go down like that. And then, is this right? Let me just double check. So this one, you want this to go under. And I just have to double check. I get a little bit uh, sort of mixed up with how this goes, but the idea is you kind of like push this back and forth. Yeah, and then this is gonna go through here. So I think I'm gonna miss some of these comments here, but that's, oh, here, Clarice. They have to turn on the notification, Heather, so they can see you live. We have to write a memo. Okay, that's a great idea, Clarice. I didn't even think about that. So notifications, perfect, so for next time. And then we're gonna, but the replay will be uh, in the group and it's gonna be on um, YouTube as well. So, so this is the same idea. So this is, like I said, this is crazy gadget number one. So this one, I'm not gonna go anywhere with it because it's, it's gonna take me too long. And then this was the other gadget I made. And I tell, let me know in the comments if you guys have ever done bead weaving. So this is sort of like bead weaving, but it's with wire. So I've already done f uh, four rows. And all I basically did was I set, I put up two chopsticks on here. I put them through these little, uh, these little uh, eyelets, screwed into a piece of wood. And I have the long pieces of wire here. And then basically all I'm going to do is take my seed beads Okay, I didn't even know how to do this before, so I just learned about, um, I've always been curious about uh, loom weaving, so I thought, oh, I'll just try it and see. So that's what we're gonna do now. So basically, I'll just do one to show you guys how it works. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you've ever done this kind of uh, bead weaving. It's uh, a lot of sort of uh, First Nations people uh, make beautiful things with the bead weaving. And uh, in uh, South America as well, they do a lot of it too. So we're just gonna, all you have to do for this is there's like the five, you put the five beads and then basically you have to put the wire under these uh, vertical wires. And then what you wanna do is you bring this, this wire underneath, but then you have to make sure there's a bead between each wire. So this is the trick. So what I did was usually the bead looms are a little higher so you can you have more wiggle room in there but because I just made this myself this is how it looks. So basically I'm pushing these beads up uh sort of um vertically and then these there's one wire in between each bead and then because this wire is under the main wires you pull it around and this is a 28 gauge wire it's quite thin. So then what we're going to do is actually just push it. Make sure, You have to make sure your seed beads have big enough holes and that the holes are lined up. So we're just going to push it and see it's gone, it's gone right through all those beads and uh, in the end, off the end. And then if you pull it, okay, what it does, it holds all of those beads in place and uh, on the wires. So that is really super cool. So that's bead weaving and you can actually do it with wire, which is really interesting. So that was gadget number two. So beyond gadgets, let's bring back our sketchbook. And these are the different ways to do weaving. Let me, guys, let me know in the comments if you guys have done bead weaving before, because I've never done it. So uh, I'm really curious. You like the, Yvonne likes the gadget, that's awesome. So let's just go ahead and try to do a ring with um, with weaving, okay? So I'm just gonna go for it, I've never done this before. Let's see what it's gonna be like. So you wanna make sure you cut a piece, a cut. I'm gonna try it with four. I'm gonna be ambitious and try it with four wires to start. So what I'm gonna do is cut two pieces of wire that are long enough to go around your finger a couple of times. 
So let's cut a couple of pieces of wire. Now this is going to be sort of the main wire that we're going to start with. And I want to get a bead. I think I'll do one not super big. Let me just see what color I want to do. Could be, I don't know, blue. What color do you guys like? Let's see. I've got green. I've got red. Maybe, a, maybe a, like an olive green one. Okay, so there we go. So let's just try this, see how it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna put a bead in there. And I might change my mind because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing with this. So we're gonna stick the bead in and then we're going to bend it like this just to hold the bead in place. So there's one. I'm just thinking now if this is actually what I wanna do. Yeah, because these wires have to be open at the end. So we're gonna go like that. And then let's do another wire on top. Let's try with four. Like I said, we're, we're gonna be ambitious to start. So I'm just gonna put my notes over here so they don't get in the way. And we're going to use our fat pliers and just push this around. So it's gonna kind of wrap around the cat's eye bead. I love these cat's eye beads. I don't know if you guys use them, but I really love them. So Trika says, never have done it either. So it's on my to-do list. Awesome. So we're learning together how to do bead we or wire weaving. That's cool. So this one, I think maybe it needs to be a little bit, I don't have my, usually I wrap this around a sharpie or something and I don't have one nearby. So I'm just going to make do like this. So what I was thinking was, wouldn't it be fun to do something like this? So if I just bring these wires in a little bit, because they all have to be sort of a semi-equidistance apart. So if we go in like this, okay, we're gonna go like that, and then we're gonna put this one in between. And, sorry, I'm just trying to get it perfect here. So there we go. So if I do something like this, let's see if we can weave that. So. This is 20 gauge to start. I think the best thing to weave it with would be the 24 gauge. Uh, 28 gauge is gonna be way too skinny. So let's try it with the um, 24 gauge. I'm gonna cut a long piece. Always better to be too big than too small. So we're gonna go like this. And then we're going to let me think of the best way to do this. Probably you want to anchor it onto your main wire. I haven't figured out quite how I'm going to actually, let me just see if I could do, this might help it to, to get a little more stable. What if I put it through here? If there's room, we could put it through this bead. If it's if there's no room, I'm going to forget that idea. No, it's not going to fit. Okay, if the hole was bigger, we could put it through there too, but it's not going to fit. So let's go ahead and bend this around here. Uh, once just to be uh, how about twice just to be sure just to anchor it in place and those of you who have done bead weaving feel free to laugh at me because <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing here so what I want to do is I'm thinking to start maybe I should just weave it all together to start let's just try just to start let's just try to weave it all together so we have four strands so I think what I'm going to do is just take this and just wind it around like once okay we're going to wind it around here these probably need to be a little bit straighter these wires but i think as you go it's going to get easier so if we just wind it around once there and then the next one i can make it a little more fancy as we go along but i think i just want to really anchor it in place so we're going to go there and then this one yeah these wires should have been definitely done a little bit better so that one and then let's try this one yeah I should have done it a little smoother but I think it's not too bad and then this we're gonna just go around this one okay we're just gonna bring it around okay like that so we've done so we've got it like kind of anchored with the four like these are wound around like on each one so that's cool but what I like is the idea of doing kind of a, one of these fancy things like this so I thought this one there was one this one has four 
This one actually has four strands, so let's try to do it that way. So it looks like there's like, they, you wind two together and then the next two together, the next two, and then the next two. So let's see if we could do that. And see if these are all, like I said, more or less equidistant apart. I probably should have like just straightened these a little bit more, but I think I'll just gonna spread them a little more for now. And then as we go along, they're gonna get pulled together. So let's just go ahead and try this. So let's do the first two. And we're gonna go around and actually they're already sort of already twisted together the first two. So let's just go around that. And then we're gonna skip down to the next one. Okay. If you look at patterns for these online, you'll see it's a little more easy to visualize. So we've already wrapped around this first wire. So let's go to the next two wires. So we're gonna go around these two, okay? And I think, you know, the more we do, the, the nicer it's gonna look. For now, it's just a little bit uh, wonky. So there's those two, okay? So that's good, so far so good. And then these ones, the next one. So this is your last one here. Make sure that's pulled up well, okay? And then, make sure my hands are still in focus here. So now what we want to do is I think I probably pulled those a little tight. They look like a little too snug now, but that's live and learn, right? Because I've never done it before. So now we're going to go around these two and you want to make sure they stay parallel, that they don't go like one on top of the other. So now we're going to go around those two, but I think I have to keep my, my little stitches a little looser. I think that's the trouble. They're getting a little tight. So this is sort of looking like bead weaving already. We've got those. And now we want to work our way back. So let's go ahead and like skip this bottom one now and just go into the second and third ones. So we'll go wrap the second and third ones together loosely because I don't, I I'm find I'm getting a little too tight here. So we're going to wrap the second and third ones together. So we've done that twice and now we're going to go to the the third and fourth ones together. So let's wrap the third and fourth ones together a little bit loosely. One, two, and so now back down again. This is actually looking really nice. I kind of like this. And as, like I said, as we go down, back and forth, it's going to get easier because the wires are going to be naturally held in place. So we're just, we're working in twos. So just, it's like going in twos and then it's forming a kind of like a, like a zigzag. It's kind of cool. I don't know if you guys can see, it's kind of, really coming along. So now, of course, the trick is going to be how do we finish it because that's always the, the trick and especially with uh, with four wires, it's going to be difficult. So now we've gone this one again, but let's at least get a bit of a, um, a bit of a length done. So there's going to be enough to go around the finger. So and how much wire did I cut for the 24 gauge? I think, think I cut about two feet should be good. So now we're, we've done that, that one and let's go up to the last two again. So I think the more you do with this, the easier it gets. Like it seems to just, just kind of try not to get too distracted so you forget what line you're on. But as long as you kind of stay a little bit focused on what you're doing, it should be okay. So now we're going to do these two in here. And I think it's probably a good idea to start with something like this, like a ring, because it's not too ambitious. Now, I know a lot of people in this group are very advanced with, with wire weaving, and I know a lot of people do the, um, the wrapped uh, cabochons, which are really beautiful. So that might be my next step, is to try something like that. And uh, I always like to put my own spin on it, so I'll have to think of a way that I could sort of add my own style to something like that. There's certainly a lot of tutorials out there. So, uh, you know, there's no lack of ideas for designs and stuff, but uh, I'm not super good at following patterns. So it's kind of, uh, would be nice just to kind of free flow with it, I think. So see, we're coming along, it's doing the zigzag form. It's not, it's not perfect by any means, but it sort of gives you an idea of, uh, you know, how it can look. And so just basically remember that you go in groups of two and uh, try not to let your wires overlap when you're, when you're winding them together. And if they do start to bend a little bit, just kind of 
try to straighten, straighten them out a little bit if you can. And uh, yeah, as for beads, this is a six millimeter bead that I'm using. Uh, it seems to work quite well. You could maybe go as big as eight millimeter. I'm not sure I'd go much bigger than that. Uh, you could even do multiple beads or you could do no beads at all. You know, it would look nice just with wire. Uh, my only concern with rings that are done with uh, wire weaving is uh, I don't know if they leave like a little mark on your finger. Like, let me know if you guys have ever worn a ring like this, if it has, uh, if it has, um, leaves little lines on your finger. I'm not sure. So Yvonne, you wrote, okay, one and two, two and three, three and four. Yes, exactly. That's it. And if you do look online, if you do search uh, wire weaving on Google, uh, images you'll get you'll definitely get like little diagrams of how it's done and so basically that's what I did for this is I just looked up the diagram and I had that's why I did that the sketchbook was had all like the sort of like the few basic wire weaving patterns that you could do so that was really uh, it's really good to get a visual of, uh, of how to do it because honestly I've been looking at these beautiful things you guys have been posting in the group and I had no clue how to do it. It looks so complicated to me. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I, if I want to even go there. But now I'm realizing it's not super complicated. It's just definitely time consuming. So that's, uh, that's the thing to consider uh, before embarking in this. Because uh, I tend to be someone that likes to do things very quickly. And to have kind of quick, quick uh, kind of uh, hacks on how to do things. And uh, see, it's it's coming along pretty well. Uh, that's why I was kind of uh, playing around with the um, with the gadgets today to see what I could do that would kind of make it easier. But uh, so far, you know, they're not perfect. I actually might order a, a a beading loom because they're not expensive to get beading looms on. Um, Amazon and uh, the one I made is okay but it's it's very limited in what it can do so I think I think I might end up getting a beading loom I think they're about $15 or something and that would be uh, something fun to play with and I would definitely work on ways to use it just with wire and not necessarily with beads as well because it's fun to do things uh, just with wire as well. Actually, when I first started making wire uh, 30 years ago, I just, just used wire. I never used beads or anything. And it was a friend of mine that was selling my work in craft shows that started saying, oh, Heather, you should start adding beads to your pieces. And so that's why I started even adding beads in the first place. And uh, now a lot, of, most of my work has beads in it. Uh, very simple, you know, like I do a lot of like kind of uh, designs with like animals and things like that. And I'll just put like bead eyes or things like that. So it's very simple. So see what I've done so far. This is um, this is how it's looking. So it's not too bad. I don't think it's going to be that long. But you know what? I think I'm going to end it there just for the sake of um, of time. And if you want, if you need actually this to be longer, if you want a little cheat, what you can do is, we'll just straighten that out, you could actually spread these out. You know, if you need more space on there, as long as you haven't put them on too tightly, these are definitely flexible. You could definitely spread them out. Uh, only because my wires got a little crooked here that I might not be able to completely do that. But see, right, this area in here is very nice. It got a little tight in here, but I think... I just don't want to spread it too much that they come right off the end, but I think you could definitely spread it. I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this end. I, actually, I think you know what I'm going to do is go ahead and just cut that end off. I might regret it, but I think I'm just going to do that now. Just because I have too many ends here. And I'll just uh, push that in a little bit. Now, how are we going to finish this? So we need the ring cone, and then we're going to bring this around. Okay, and I haven't decided if I'm going to end, I might make it really fancy and end with some spirals. That might be really cute actually. So, so it's adjustable. What I'm going to do is I don't want to actually, you know, in theory, actually there's two ways I could do this. Okay, 
I could either take these ends and attach them to this. Do you see this loop here? I could attach them and then it would end up being like a fixed ring. I kind of want to do it both ways or I could make some spirals with these. It depends on if you want to have it adjustable or not. So if you want it adjustable, leave this open and just either kind of clip these off and make loops or attach them in. So let's, why don't we try something halfway in between. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this little end off because I don't think we need these little wires anymore. So let's go ahead and cut that off. Okay, and if we're gonna make it symmetrical, what you can do is push one down, push this one up, okay. We're gonna push one up, one down, like that. And so what you could do is you can actually kind of measure this to how you want and then just bend these middle wires up. Okay, I'm going to trim them. So this one will not be adjustable, but you can definitely make an adjustable ring if you want. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is actually we can even cut them a little bit more. Okay. And we're just going to take this loop that was at the end and slip them, slip this in here, okay? And then just, we just want to finish these ends. So all you're going to do is take these ends and just bend them down a bit, okay? But then, do you see how they look there? So we're going to trim them a little bit more because we just want them to fit snugly. So we're just going to cut that one there. And that one there okay and then these will just be finished just so we can get that down let me get my little pliers my little round pliers so we can just bring that down and these ones we can just as long as they're like sitting in there kind of flush like not one overlapping the other as long as they like fit right in there then they're not going to be too scratchy so that's that then we could go ahead and put this in here and adjust it how you want so now you have a few choices you could have either put all four ends in there to make a nice clean finish or if you want it fancy now we could just make spirals with these ends so I've done a couple videos now about how to make spirals. So we're gonna just take the end and well, probably you'll wanna cut it first. So we're just gonna cut the end so it's nice and straight. Okay, I'm gonna move that out of the way. And then we're going to just take this and make a spiral. Okay, so just flick of the wrist. Just gonna bring it in like that. Gonna bring it in. And then you can just push it in with your fingers Okay, so there's one little spiral there, and then we can do the same on this side. Okay, we're just going to cut the end, and then same thing, we could do it. spiral. So like I said, if you want an adjustable ring, just do spirals with all of the ends. That's no problem at all. In fact, maybe I'll make a few of these to show you guys, and I'll post a picture. I won't do it now, it's because you're gonna be up till midnight but I'll do a few of them and then I'll post them in the group to see how they look. So if you if you wanna tighten that up a bit too, you can. You can always tighten up those loops a little bit. And otherwise, depending on how big you want your ring, these you can adjust to any size that you want. And then the finishing touch would be to take your, your stick and then just put it in here and just kind of push it in to see how you want it and to see if it if it fits you because it might be way too big. If it's way too big, you could even clip these ends and pull them in a little bit more. So let's see how it looks. And it's kind of cool. It's actually turned out really well considering this is my very first uh, wire uh, weaving project. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments too if you think um, it would be good to be an adjustable ring or if you like it like this. And uh, let me know if you're if you're gonna make one, and if you do, post pictures in the group to come in the group. 
And Kathy says, great job. Thank you so much for a first time. Uh, not too bad. And uh, let me know what you think of my crazy gadgets. Uh, I'll let you know if I get a, a bead loom and I'm going to actually I'll finish those ones that I started too. So you guys can see what's possible when you start with something that uh, looks crazy, but you can sometimes finish it up and it looks not too bad. So, uh, so I'm going to let you guys go and uh, next week we'll see, uh, we might still do it on in Facebook. If not, we might do it on YouTube. I'm going to see about the technology and keep sharing your uh, pictures of stuff in the, in the group. I just love seeing what you guys make and we'll definitely see you uh, next week live and uh, every day in the Facebook group. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys soon.